Welcome to yet another APF Records podcast. I'm your host, James Kidd, and I'm very much looking forward to getting this podcast and all the amazing bands on APF Records into your ears across the coming months of 2021 and beyond. APF Records is an independent label based in Manchester, England, housing some of the finest purveyors of heavy riffs in the UK underground heavy music scenes. With over 50 releases from a roster of 30 bands, including Battalions, Barbarian Hermits, Corrupt Moral Altar, Pissed, Desert Storm and Video Nasties, APF Records has quickly become a name to know if you like your riffs with some fucking balls. Each episode will feature guests from an APF band who have an upcoming release on the label and we'll be talking about that release, life on the road, studio stories and how they're staying sane during the pandemic. Please give a very warm APF Records podcast welcome to our special guests today. Uh, we have all three members of the band Wasted Death. How's it going, fellas? Yeah, great. What's up? Yeah. Great to have you here. Um, so you, you guys are sort of something of a super group in your own right, uh, <laughs> you could say. In, in as much as you feature members who are all in other kind of well-established bands. So uh, give us a rundown of who's who in the band. Who do you want to start? Go on, Wayne. You kick it off, mate. Okay, I'll start. Uh, yeah, so my name's <laughs> Wayne. Do, do you want me to tell in... them which bands you play? <laughs> do you want to know the bands I play? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. I've been at work all day. I'm completely <laughs> yeah. fried. No, I just no worries, mate. about a band I've been recording all day. <laughs> yes, please. No. Yeah. <laughs> Take some of the load off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I play in Wasted Death, um, a band called Pet Brick, uh, Big Lad. Then I do some solo stuff under the name Johnny Broke and my own name as well. So, Pet Brick uh, and Big I, Lad are two great names. I've heard of Pet Brick before, certainly. Yeah. All right then, so uh, Tom, what about you? Uh, I play currently with Wasted Death and uh, USA Nails. And cool. I've been in Death Battles with Wayne before that. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um, and floated around a couple of other bands here and there for a couple of gigs. But uh, yeah, currently just uh, just the two. Nice one. And what about you, Charlie? Just the two is quite rare for a drum race, isn't it? That's quite, that's quite, that's quite neat. Um, just uh, yeah, for me, I'm in a band, also an APF band called Beggar. Okay, cool. Currently flung in all corners of the world at the moment. Have you got some international folks, or are you just? We've got yeah, um, yeah. Unfortunately, we do now. I mean, so Bert is Bert was living in London when we met him. He plays drums, um, right. but he's from France, so he's there at the moment. Right. Okay. Um, and uh, Jake is living in Oslo at the moment. Wow. Uh, yeah, which is super cool. Sounds like he's having a great time out there. But I feel like all Scandinavian countries are killing it, to be honest. So Yeah, very true. I mean, um, we took Widows to Finland back in, uh, fuck, that was 2012. And yeah, we were only there for like four days, but it was a wicked experience. Like, it was such a nice country. So clean. So amazingly yeah. tidy, we found. Yeah. Like, e- even in the capital, when we went to Helsinki, we were just like, it's very, very clean, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Never get that here. So how did you come to join up with APF Records then? What was your kind of origin story, so to speak? Yeah, I suppose because I was so Beggar's been on APF since um we put out an album in 20, what year was it? 20, called Compelled to Repeat. And so I met Fieldy in um a grotty bar called Blondie's out near Hackney, where Possessor were playing a gig and had had many drunken laughs at that point. And then he came to catch us at Bloodstock and stuff. So so, so we, we'd, we'd met a couple of times before we signed Beggar and then we were kind of pootling along, doing our thing. And then when, uh, when, when Wayne dropped me a message, uh, do you want to get involved with some disgusting DB? I was like, definitely. And as we were, as we were recording it with, with Tom, we were talking about who would be best, where, where's this all going to live? Fieldy was like a number one, you know, option in, in our minds. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah first I, choice. I think, like, I, I've recorded maybe four or five albums, I think, that are on the label now, something like that. So was kind of very much aware of the label and kind of how well the, the whole thing's going, it mm. seems, you know. And, I think I've um, seen your name on a Possessor album, is that right? Yeah, so I did a couple of Possessor records. I did the Brothers Keg album. I'd done the Beggar record. Then obviously the Wasted Death stuff. Yeah. Um, trying to think if I've done anything else for them. I think that might be it. So yeah, four or five, I think, something yeah, like I mean, that. It looks like you've got a fair bit of gear in the uh, in the background there, from what I can see on your shelves. 
this is just my home studio as well. My nice. actual studio that you've got even more junk in it. It's just junk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice cat. There he is. She, oh, she, there's the kitty. Yeah, here she is. She's done another, the cat invasion that we all knew was going to happen. Another APF kitty invasion. Hello, Porsche. Another APF cat ready to delete all my stuff. Send emails. <laughs> <laughs> Unsolicited. <laughs> Looking at the uh, the info that I found about you on the APF Records website, uh, in your kind of in your own words, this project is definitely a lockdown baby. Uh, so did it come about as a result of I've got loads of spare time now. What shall I do with it? Or was it more, ah, I've finally got time to get on with this thing that I've been wanting to do for ages, but just not had any space? Well, I think, like, f- for me, like, because I-, I kind of put the first EP together very much kind of on my own, not ever really thinking it would be a band. It was just kind of played some guitar and some bass over some programmed drums, but knew Tom like Tom lives next door to my studio and kind of Tom was around and I was like, Hey, you know, I've done this stuff. Do you want to come and like play drums on it? And then it, it kind of actually started to sound a lot better than I thought it was going to. So kind of was like, originally I, I had it in my head that I'd probably just sing on it and then that would be the end of it. You know what I mean? Um, but then was just like, Oh shit, there's actually something here. You know, I've kind of managed to completely blag playing guitar. Um, <laughs> and so, um, yeah, kind of was like, who do I know that can sing really fucking well? So, uh, yeah, gave Charlie a shout and was like, yo, <laughs> you know, like, do you want to come and do some singing? So, um, in a way, it was kind of like I just had a, a free day in my studio. So kind of started writing this stuff. And then it was all quite organic, w- weirdly. You know what I mean? It wasn't too forced. It all just kind of happened quite quickly. And the same with the second EP as well. You know, it was like there wasn't really a plan to to kind of write a second one quite so fast. But the ideas were there and, you know, kind of something I've learned over the 20 years of writing and recording music and stuff is that like when the energy is there don't don't let it dissipate because it can <laughs> it can just mm-hmm. disappear oh yeah you know and yeah, so yeah. you know whilst the ideas are flowing and stuff just try and capture as much of it as you can and um yeah and so now we've kind of just started the task of learning how to play it live because um i didn't <laughs> i literally didn't even know if i was going to be able to pull it off because i've never played guitar before i was just oh, like, wow okay i was like wow you know okay so i kind of managed to wing that on record but obviously you know with a computer there's a certain amount of editing you can do and then it's just like am i actually going to be able to do this live because we booked gigs (laughs) (laughs) yeah you're gonna have to see for yourself (laughs) yeah we did that thing where people were like hey do you want to play i was like yeah sure that sounds great (laughs) mate there's no motivator like a deadline yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, what have I done? What <laughs> if I can't play this stuff? Like, holy shit. I knew that Tom and Charlie would be able to do it, like, fucking with their eyes closed. But I was like, uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> well, it's definitely, a, you know, a big kind of self endorsement of yourself if you're like, yeah, I'm going to take on some gigs now. now. But, right, let's get on with things. Yeah, well, you know, kind of people that, you know, I think Tom probably knows this about me. I have this way of kind of bowling into situations and kind of making things happen quite quickly and then suddenly being like, okay, now I've got to find time to try and do this. Mm. (laughs) Yeah, I know you've got to do it. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And I've said yes to all this shit. Now I've actually got to work out (laughs) how it's going to happen. And um, yeah, but I think we're having a hoot. We're having like... The rehearsals that we've done so far, I just like this shit sounds great. It's like so much totally. fun because it's yeah. like it, it's, it's all, all about me. having the enjoyment of it, man. It's just supposed to be fun at the end of the day, fun yeah. first. Yeah, yeah, really. Uh, because like the other two projects that I do, they're not that they're not fun, but they, you know, they've got to the point where like one of them's like seven, eight years in, and so there's always that pressure to kind of like, oh, yeah. okay, we've got to get, got to do more, we've got to this taking more seriously blah 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 and mm-hmm. the other one that i'm doing is just snowballing faster and faster and faster and struggling to kind of keep up with it um and so this is like really nice it's really grounding and just like shit this is why i started doing music you know just like playing guitars in a fucking room with some mates yeah like, not not that the other bands aren't mates but this is just like it, it it's just like basic it's going back to base level you know kind yeah, of back like, to roots yeah you know back totally to roots. yeah so yeah i suppose your other projects are very electronic aren't they wayne yeah, you know what i mean exactly, as yeah. well 
So yeah, it's plugging play, an amp in. It is, yeah. Like the yeah. other two projects that I do don't use guitars. It's mm. drums. And so there's a certain more element of like more kind of organic stuff yeah. going on. That's yeah. it. Yeah, it does feel organic, I think, you know, because yeah. it's fun. You know what I mean? We're, mm. we're at the stage where we're really enjoying it. Yeah, it's kind of flowing. So yeah. it's, good, it's good when it's not just enjoyable, but because it's enjoyable, it helps it kind of uh, flow onto the That's next it. stages. Yeah, it helps it know. live. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, lockdowns presented its own challenges to bands over the last 18 months. So how did you manage to put all this together whilst not only probably really being able to see each other and meet up to discuss and rehearse ideas, uh, but also the fact that like a lot of, you know, recording facilities and uh, kind of pressing facilities will have been either working at kind of a minimal capacity or completely closed down for the last however long. Um, yeah, yeah, like, because I run a recording studio and I have my own studio, obviously it's, a, you know, it's a bonus. Um, but really, like, I was allowed to keep working throughout, apart from the very first lockdown. That was yeah. the one that, you know, but because recording studios fell into that thing, um, you know, like post production y kind of stuff, we were allowed to keep working. But, you know, I think the first one, Charlie and Tom, you hadn't even you didn't even meet each other whilst we were doing the first one, did you? That's it. We met. We met like, yeah, years, so. years before, right? But um, during the whole of that, did we? that process, it was like <laughs> someone did. <laughs> yeah, believe it or not. <laughs> but like it was like um, yeah, rolling up the studio. I was like, oh, there's it's quite a good drum take here. Like it's Tom, Tom, Tom's been in. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was good. Uh, yeah, it was uh, for for me. It was like. Uh, I mean Wayne kind of covered it but I kind of remember just standing outside the flat and he was like I've got this stuff and I'd been made redundant or I was on furlough so I was just like well yeah I'm just doing fuck all so I'll come mm. and play drums yeah um, nice, and, the, nice. and we just went and it just because he had programmed everything it was just so I just had to learn each bit as it went and then and that's how that happened really so it was just a like Wayne said I, I didn't really think anything of it in the sense that you know, I thought it was fun and it was good. And it was like, cool. Yeah, yeah. we've just done something to keep us occupied for a couple of days. Um, Do you all live like fairly local to each other then, you know, or um, or is it more of a kind of a correspondence project? Well, well, as, as Wayne said, he's he's next door. So his, his recording mm. studio is next door to my flat. Oh, so, right. That's so nice I'm, I'm literally around the corner, yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yes, yeah, so that was that. And Charlie's up in... Um, Manor House, isn't it? Yeah, I'm up in Manor House, kind of way. Yeah, so yeah. not too far. Yeah, um, but, but the whole the whole thing. I, I guess that because we've got all that there, and I mean Wayne must have had this with a lot of other projects, but because that setup's there and it's so easy, it did make this particular thing very easy to do. Because for us, just you know, because we've set up in that way, I suppose in the past. But um, you know, it wouldn't if if you know had it not been for the pandemic, I'm sure Wayne wouldn't have reached out to say hey i want to start a new band and i'm thinking of getting these people involved should we write some music do you know what i mean it was just like he, he, mm. he didn't have a yeah. job on because of the pandemic so he wrote some music and i was here and i didn't have anything to do so i was there and he was like tom can drum and then it's a, so that's that's why it happened really easily and i think when yeah. we come it's got to be incredibly convenient having the studio like next door certainly well it's, in, it's interesting for me because i think it's uh it's very different you know with usa nails we practice every tuesday religiously and we have done for since i've been in the band and yeah. that's just writing ideas you know and, and whatever and sometimes you have days where you're not coming up with much and sometimes you come up with a lot and hmm. you do it that way where you keep pushing it kind of thing um whereas with this it was just we're now we're learning to play the tunes we're just um we're enjoying it because the more we, every time we get together, the better and better it sounds because we're learning every time. <laughs> so you sort of, you start getting into it. Do you know what I mean? And so there's no, yeah. And there's no sort of negativity at all because you're just sort of enjoying learning the music that you've already played, play technically, yeah. but you don't know how to play yet. <laughs> so I, I literally. That's it. Yeah. It's like music that you like. Yeah. Yeah. That you then have to, yeah. Yeah. That you then bring into life in a, in a room. Like, oh, right. Yeah. yeah. I, li I listened yeah, to the well, EPs myself for the first time <laughs> all the way through about two weeks ago. <laughs> I mean, I'd obviously heard them, but I, I really needed to learn them. So I had to sit down and study them. And I just listened to them off Bandcamp until it tried to um, kick me off because it said I wasn't buying it. 
That's why I'm waiting for the Masters. <laughs> <laughs> begrudgingly at that point oh, can I have the tunes you busted <laughs> did you not were you not like messaging any of the other band like bro download code come on hook me up yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, could have yeah. just played it as a yeah, but... <laughs> yeah it's like Tom Bruins yeah you've what? got to speculate to accumulate bro <laughs> just wanted to get a little money goes. going into the account <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right, so um, hey, from what I can see, it looks like you've got two releases on your band camp, Ugly as Hell and Ugly as Hell 2, Uglier Than Hell, great names. Um, were they both recorded with a mind to releasing them on APF then, or did you have kind of others in mind, but APF sort of one out over the rest? Like, I've got friends that run labels that I'd kind of sent it to, but really, like, I knew that it wouldn't suit any mm. of them, you know, like... Just friends that I just wanted some feedback off, just to be like, hey, you know, like this is coming together. I think it's actually pretty good. Like, you know, um, what do you think? And so, yeah, some friends were really kind of um, integral to that. But, you know, like, because again, that thing where it's like, I do music every day, that's my job. Um, my friends, uh, everyone does music, you know what I mean? So if I was just sending it to my friends, they just happen to be record labels and stuff like that. Yeah. Know? um so yeah but like really i think right from the off me and charlie had just said oh you know this is perfect for uh mm. for fieldy at apf you know it's um yeah absolutely you know i think i i think the label's cracking i think what he's doing is really good he's obviously got like a lot of people that are um buying the stuff you know like it seems that the wasted death stuff people have bought it and are into it and considering you know we, we haven't actually played a show yet it's yeah you're like wow this is great you know people are into it people are digging it so that makes you excited straight away so yeah yeah i think you know yeah, yeah. Like, and it's uh it's kind of good in a way with like putting out a couple of little releases like you have done helps build some good buzz you know obviously being a new band there's no no such thing as bad pr you know any any <laughs> kind of way of getting your name out there is always a good thing and if you can create a bit of a buzz with some recorded music you know, even prior to being ready to actually go out and play it live, it can certainly be yeah. like a, a bit of a benefit kind of thing, getting that getting that buzz together so that people sort of know who you are before they're showing up at the at the gigs. Yeah, I, I think it'll work. Well, fucking, as long as I don't completely balls it all up. Um, I think it, <laughs> <laughs> it will be, um, yeah, I, I hope so. Yeah, like totally. And I think, you know, we've been, we've you know the first three gigs we've got a really kind of nice shows as well um where i think there'll be kind of a decent crowd there just straight off the bat which is um it's exciting you know to know that you're going to turn up and you know having spent i don't know how long were we playing when did we start death pedals tom when was that like oh well, that was 12 like 2000, 2011 2012 or something yeah okay so maybe 10 years ago you know playing yeah. music in london for 10 years you know, when you stop doing the guitar music and then you come back with it, I think people are just naturally kind of interested in what you're going to come back with, having had not a particularly big band, but just an established band in London. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then it's like, okay, you know, then two members from that and then Charlie from Beggar, you know, we're kind of pulling two worlds kind of together, you know, the slight, like Charlie's definitely from the more metal kind of world and, me and Tom were definitely more from the punk kind of thing in London. So we're kind of pulling these two crowds together as well. So it's going to be crossover think, shit. Yeah, <laughs> man. It's breaking out. I don't know. I think, I don't even sure. Is, is it like, it's like a crossover, but it's like simplified. It's like dumbing down of the two sides. Dumbing down both sides. Both sides lose. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah it's something new in the middle. It's not hard. <laughs> Just take the shittest bits of both genres and put them together. No, the shittest bits are simplest bits. Uh, there's, there's always room for dumb there's always room for dumb shit everyone oh man that's what the band whole band's again. about have you seen you the artwork <laughs> yeah, <probably>. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I yeah. saw the artwork I was like you know how you can people say you can't hear pictures <laughs> you, see, you see the artwork and you're like yeah I bet I know what this sounds like awesome yeah, yeah. like I, I, remember, <laughs> yeah. I remember seeing like municipal waste like i played fucking what leeds and Reading in about 2007 mm. and just kind of managing to catch municipal waste 
there and like I was just like fuck yeah you know I haven't seen this band I really want to see them and then she walked into the tent and they were just like this song's about how much we hate our president it's called we hate the president <laughs> <laughs> I was just like fucking this is it and like that's just always stuck in my head I think nice. it was like Bush or something like that at the time was the president it would have been so, at that yeah, point yeah yeah and so it was just like you know that and then with their like artwork, you know, and everything about that band, you know, they were just mm. eating pizza on stage, fucking crowd surfing on boogie boards. I was like, one day I want to do that. I want to yeah. be in a band that looks like they're having that much fucking fun. And in they're fact, just playing the same song. And it was a really short song. They're just trying to play it quicker and quicker and quicker. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, <laughs> this, this is great. This is a great idea for a fucking band, you know? And so, yeah, that's kind of how I'm totally like coming this to, you know, just bought a completely fucking ridiculous, like metal guitar that, you know, <laughs> I was like, this guitar needs to be in this fucking band. You know, <laughs> just like bright yellow fucking washburn shredder. And then oh, it's nice. just going to be me. Is it pointy? Fucking... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the pointy, pointy, yeah. Yeah, real pointy guitar. Fucking right. Yeah, and I was like, maybe I'll maybe I'll just like drink cocktails wearing a fucking Hawaiian shirt or something. Yeah, do that shit. Yeah. It, but it's gotta be like literally a tropical fruit bowl. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Yeah, you know I mean? Like the more fruit and umbrellas coming off it, it, it that's like this guitar the, uh, comes with a slice of pineapple on it. Yeah, <laughs> that's the sign yeah. of like kind of cocktail hierarchy, basically. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was it that that is it, like I could do like a deet of on teas and actually just play in a massive <laughs> cocktail glass? <laughs> that would be incredible. Yeah. I thought we were going to burst out of a cake. Uh, uh, well, you can do that. I can be in a cocktail <laughs> glass. Right, you be in a cocktail what, glass. Yeah. What can Tom be? What could like drummer that can't burst out of anything? He could be in like the Thundercats layer or something like that. All I've got in my head <laughs> a little is, grotto. Uh... <laughs> All I'm imagining so is me and Charlie like just in black, just sweating and sweating, and you're just sitting in a hammock <laughs> drinking cocktails. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> exactly. Why are you on a cocktail? Whilst we're, we're, we're playing really space. hard riffs. <laughs> it sounds perfect. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, it's on record yeah. now, lads. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, you've, you've spoken. It's, it's got to happen. I expect to see it. <laughs> yeah. You're on. Right. You got it. So I reckon it's time for the first of our two tracks from uh, Wasted Death today. What have you got for us first, lads? Shall we play the first song off of the new EP? Tomorrow's Children Will Eat Algae. Tomorrow's Children Will Eat Algae. All right. About the future, bro. Yeah, I was going to say, is there a story (laughs) behind it? (laughs) We ate all the pizza and said there's only algae left. (laughs) Fair play. All right, so let's get into it.
and we're back and that was wasted death with tomorrow's children will eat algae uh, it's the first track of ugly as hell too uh and it's yeah it's, a, it's another five tracker with art by our boy james wilson sweet, yeah. sweet, sweet. was there anything that you've learned from your experience in previous bands that helped you when uh, forming and writing with uh, Wasted Death? Um, I, I thought about this earlier on, actually. <clears throat> I think I think Wayne and I had been in the band for eight years or something. And I think um, we, we just know how to work with each other in that sense. I think it's quite easy for us to know what the other one's doing because we've had all that time to learn that. So I think maybe, I don't, I don't know if Charlie knows noticed that or gave that or maybe it doesn't matter because it was all recorded but um but i think when charlie then popped in it was just sort of quite easy to feel comfortable with the whole setup i think it was just like and, and actually really I, I now look at charlie for the directions um, you don't look at me. <laughs> well you're I'm trying to learn how to play guitar i'm trying to figure out what i'm doing and charlie seems to know what's going on <laughs> so <laughs> There if you, you can fake that, you can fake anything. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's cool. It's nice. It's nice having a three piece as well. You know what I mean? It's nice, it. like with long yeah. 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 yeah, I've been in bands from like anywhere between like two people and six people in the past, and the three piece is definitely the one. You know what I mean? It's so easy to manage. You've each got your own job that you're responsible for, and best of all, you haven't got to hire a special van if you want to go out on tour. You can just get a transit and fuck the gear in the back. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, yeah. we'll be in the Ford Fiesta. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, mate. You'd be amazed how much you can get in a Nissan Micra, especially when you spent your youth playing Tetris. Trust me. <laughs> 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 no, but logistics-wise, it is what, I, what one thing I do really like about this band, and like kind of contrasting with or like off the back of doing doing bands for a little bit, is that like taking it like making it easy for yourself uh and you know keeping things straightforward in terms of the setup and the way that you the way that you record and the gear that you use it's quite stripped mm -hmm. back and that's all really sweet like that's something that i really enjoy. well that kind of leads me neatly on to my next question then which is do you guys have a secret weapon that you use either live or in the studio uh probably more in the studio for the time being um Wayne shredding. It's the answer is Wayne <laughs> I was, being Eddie Van. I was going to say in in this Wayne's guitar so, be Wayne is the secret weapon, isn't it? But uh, yeah, it's like a, a piece of gear that you have that uh, really helps you kind of like nail your sound. Whether it's like a certain guitar, a, pe a guitar pedal, like a special snare, or even like a piece of outboard gear that just kind of gives it that little. Because of like my history with, I have quite particular kind of taste you know, mm -hmm. for bass sounds and guitar sounds. And so when I wrote the first EP, I kind of, you know, I played the bass and the guitar on that first one. And so kind of handed it over to Charlie, but kind of knowing that Charlie's bass sound that he had in Beggar was quite different to what mm. I had kind of recorded. So mm. it, it was a bit like kind of trying to push Charlie, but yeah, go and get a blues driver and put that on bass. Cause like, I love it when basses sound like guitars, you know, right. but just, then lower. yeah and you know i was kind of like the second ep's got a bit of kind of hm2 in there mm -hmm. but actually kind of and i started to like think oh maybe i'll use like two amps but again like just ended up using like an acapulco gold kind of pedal which is like one of the i think it's a model t yeah it's model t preamp preamp yeah it's a dead simple it's little circuit just like a couple of couple of ic's and a few other little bits and that's that's your lot yeah, that's it. So like that, and then I've bought a bass amp, but like just a class D, like 200 watt solid state thing, like mm -hmm. super clean. And I use that as a guitar amp. And those two together are killer, you know, like, and my studio is full of amps. I've got like every vintage boutique -y kind of amp yeah. probably going. Um, but actually for this, just this tiny little solid state head with this Model T thing just works, you know. You, uh, um, you, you got any mat amps in that pile? I do, yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. What you got? You got a really nice mat amp in there. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a GT one with like a, one of the big oversized kind of cabs. Good man. Uh, yeah, that's what I've got. 
Yeah, yeah, I love it. It's great. Um, but fuck, fuck, it's so heavy. I can't be asked to take it to a gig. You know, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> so I was it's like, not going anywhere, I'm going to buy a fucking tiny, tiny 200 watt little bass head thing that was like 100 quid and see see if I can get away with it. And I've got to be honest, like these little class D bass heads, like they're crap for bass, but for guitar, they're fucking great, man. Mm. Oh, fair dues, fair dues. Yeah. All right, so on to the inevitable lockdown questions then, fellas. How have you been staying sane during the lockdown and what non-musical shenanigans have you been up to to keep yourselves entertained? Buying Bitcoin and buying internet drugs. Yeah, fair play. Yeah. It's a good way to spend your time, mate, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. all I did for a year and a half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Made Man United the most successful team in the world on FIFA ever. Good on you. Do you suit up for the finals? <laughs> no, I just I just make the half length twice as long to get it <laughs> a bit off. <laughs> I'm mostly in my pajamas. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And no, I've changed my dress code. I I don't wear jeans anymore. I just wear tracksuit trousers. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. more more of a player manager kind of angle, right? Ready if they need you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Good thing I put on the stripes. <laughs> sort of the Let's go. <laughs> yeah, in the lockdown, so we we had a kitten land, um, which was a fairly recent thing, but we were on a waiting list because um, it's a super lush, hypoallergenic little um, little little number. So she's absolutely adorable, and that's um, that's been a huge, huge splash in our lives. Now we're slowly starting to see a return to normality again. What are you most looking forward to being able to do more of? Seeing my friends. I'm going to, like, obviously, like, the, the obvious answer is going to gigs mm. and playing gigs. But, like, I'm getting so many, like, I'm playing a festival this weekend. It's like a three-day festival um, inside. And I'm a, I'm a little bit kind of torn. I'm, like, I'm really looking forward to it. But I'm also, like, nervous as shit because yeah. I've seen loads of people go to, like, fucking bloodstock and it felt like everyone got covid at bloodstock and yeah, then true true you know like and then a few other kind of festivals that's kind of happened with and a few other bands i've seen that's kind of happened with so like i am excited about that but i'm actually more excited about just seeing people yeah a bit more regularly you know it's simple but that's what i've missed the most you know people um and just like hanging out and stuff so yeah you know like sure music and stuff is great that it's coming back, but it's definitely making me feel fucking weird. <laughs> mm. Yeah, um, I went to Fieldy's 50th um, back at the, like, earlier in the month. How was yeah. that? A few weeks ago. Yeah, it was really nice, man. It was nice nice to, A, get out of Nottingham again, even if it was just kind of going up to Bolton. Yeah, it was just ni nice to get out, see some people I've not seen in a while, see some live music for the first time in ages as well. Get my face blown off by um, 1968 and Mastiff and Swamp Coffin. Lovely. Uh, just sort of like get that um, that bass drum thump in my chest again, which I'd forgotten that I'd... Uh, you forget what it is. That. Yeah. yeah. You forget that sensation, don't you? I forgot yeah. that I'd missed it as well. And uh, yeah. and then when it happened again, I was like, oh, oh, there it is. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I was, I was a little... Just, a little bit paranoid to start with. I was like, all right, I'm in an enclosed space with lots of people. Yeah. Um, you know, this yeah. is this is unusual and weird and uh, not happened for a while. But then was I it... just got drunk and was fine. <laughs> yeah, no. Was it seated or was it standing up? Was it proper? Oh, no, it was, um, it was standing up. But yeah. there was like maybe about a half or just over a third of the kind of yeah. full capacity of like when you've got Riff Fest there or something like that that um that you normally because normally when when there's a big gig on there and it's on the outside bit you're proper like shoulder to shoulder like yeah. squished in but um yeah no it was good it was good i do remember going into town one time just after the lockdown kind of started to lift and it was like pretty early morning so there wasn't anybody about and i was like yeah this is all right sound not a problem at all and then i was in the opticians for about an hour and came back and just half of Nottingham had just fucking showed up in town <laughs> at this point. And I yeah. was like, who are all these fucking dirty <laughs> mongrel scumbags? I've no idea who you are. Get away from me with your germs. <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> yeah. Unclean. Uh, yeah, yeah it did make it did make me like uncomfortably paranoid. I don't know what made me more uncomfortable was the paranoia or the fact that I was uncomfortable about being paranoid. 
Yeah, I think that's it. Like this weekend is going to be like 500, 600 people, I think. And you're just like, ah. Mm. Is that raw power? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 I'm like, I want to go like all weekend because like so many fucking amazing bands are playing. But then there's just this one side of me being like, maybe you should just go the day that you're playing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it's it's really hard. And like I think I've recorded like fucking 15 bands on the bill. So I just want to go and see everyone. You know, it's that yeah. kind of thing where I'm like, ah shit. I mean uh, I- I think with the bloodstock thing, man, like, you know, everybody goes hard at bloodstock. It is tradition. So it's a given. Yeah. And everybody's been out of practice for a couple of years yeah. of going to get, and everyone's That's a couple right. of years older. Their bones are a couple of years creakier. You know what I mean, <laughs> yeah. especially when you, especially when you're like past your mid thirties as well, like, you know, getting shit faced and sleeping in a field, like it has that more and more cumulative effect on you. Yeah. It's not you easy. Stay out. And when I can you, only do it for one night now. Fuck yeah. it. You know what I mean, I don't I fuck weekenders where you've got to sleep in tents. Mm. Well, that was <laughs> what, what I really liked about having a van. It was just I had a bunk in the back. And I'd just yeah. keep in that and be like, yeah, whatever. Enjoy your leaky tent, not bad. <laughs> yeah. Does that mean wasted death of going glamping? Oh yeah, man. Yeah, yeah sure. Nah, you Let's can sleep. I'll sleep in your fucking fiesta or whatever. Yeah, yeah, we all sleep in that fiesta. Yeah, it's <laughs> some little solar-powered fairy lights around it. Yeah, man, I've got no problem with that. <laughs> yeah. All right, so it's time for our second track of the day, then, fellas. What have you got for us behind door number two? I think Tom should choose it because he knows the song so well. All right then. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a bit of bum fuck nowhere. That's what we're talking about here. And that was Wasted Death with Bumfuck Nowhere from their first release, Ugly as Hell. Uh, so let's get on to some uh, questions about your record collection then. Uh, what was the first record you guys ever owned? Obviously, I'm guessing there's going to be three different answers, unless by some bizarre coincidence, you all happen to buy the same CD for the first time. So I go for, I think the first album I bought was Papa Roach's Infest. Or it might have been Muse's um, Origin of Symmetry, maybe. The first ever CD that was casting about that. It's like the first CD that I owned, like, because I got given a CD with like my first right. stereo by my dad. And that was like oh, Saxon yes, Live. Yes, so well, what? Right start. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Right. It was so obscure. I was like, what is this? Influence your dress <laughs> sense to this day. Oh, hell yeah, man. 
Well, but then the first one that I ever bought was Use Your Illusion 2 by Guns N' Roses. That was it. You know, not the greatest Guns N' Roses album, but it was a Guns N' Roses album, so it was all right. Yeah, fair news. Yeah, yeah. And what about you, Tom? Um, I don't remember. My, my older brother, he, he had all of the music, so I just listened to that. Mostly, oh, okay. I think, before I even got my... So the first... I think the first CD I remember stealing from his room and keeping in my room was mm. um, The Who, I think. Oh, my okay. generation, I think. Yeah, it's a good start too, man. Definitely. Yeah. Fucking much better than Papa Roach. Where's he gone? He's gone. <laughs> yeah, <that's it. laughs> You've shamed him, mate. Is that? Yeah, yeah. it's because it's I knew you were going to quiz me about Papa Roach, so I thought I'd better... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so following on from that then, what was the first record that made you all want to play music? I think that was the one for me. <laughs> yeah? I think cool. so. I think I got a bit obsessed with that at the time. Um, you can I tell what you're coming, man. Definitely Keith moon ask. I think it's just, well, it was, it was that thing. I just I just heard that. I think I'd been playing drums for a little bit or just learning from school. Mm. And then um, I heard that, and that was the first thing that really, like, made me want to play it, I suppose, because it just sounded so energetic and so fucking fun. And mm. the way they just played around with everything, you know, I think if I'd been introduced to anything else, I might not have um, got that kind of buzz for it. And then, yeah, and then anyone, I think anyone that drums in, I don't, that, that no one really drums in his style, but there are a lot of, when I was introduced to the Bronx and that I think their drum was, it was awesome. Um, I also like Supergrass's drummer. And then I yes. kind of recently kind of realised that they all had something slightly in common, which was to sort of seemingly when they sort of do fills and stuff, they, they seem to be kind of making it up a little bit as they're going along in a way. Right. Um, sort of that kind of natural kind of feel of just hitting all the stabs and also filling in between all the stabs and where all the guitar hits are and then filling in between that. Sweet. Yeah, ah, okay. Sorry, I'm being attacked by a cat that's just off screen. Bear with me a second. You're right. There's <laughs> no. some great drumming on those albums. Like that Who album, The Bronx as well. Yeah, I'm trying to think what got me started in playing music because I don't like, I can't even remember what my first instrument was, whether I had a guitar first or if I had a drum kit first. I think I had a drum kit first, but it all happened kind of at the same time. Um, but I couldn't. I'm not sure I could put my finger on what I think it was more friends, you know, than actually a record. It was mm. like friends had started playing guitars and stuff like that. And I was into like, I think it was, I could probably say something like Master of Puppets by Metallica was the first one that made me and my friends want to start a band when I was super, super young. You know, yeah. none of us could do it. But there was one guy who was a bit of a freak on guitar that was just like, oh, shit, this guy might actually go and do something. Mm. Um, but we'd all just fucking get in a room together. My parents used to just let us go upstairs and all just fucking hit. Every, I've got tapes of stuff where it's just like, I don't know what's going on, you know. I'm just like, ba ba ba, And then someone's doing <laughs> solo, but then someone's rapping over it. And, you know, it's just like, <laughs> absolute chaos, man. Like, yeah. hours of chaos. Um, but uh, yeah, I pro I'm going to say, yeah, probably Master of Puppets was the first one that really made me be like, holy shit, you know, this is like music that I want to kind of play. Mm. Yeah, some fine choices in amongst all of those. Yeah. Definitely, especially Master of Puppets as well. Like, that's quite... Um, Can't top that, really. But, <laughs> nah, it, that, that's the fucking big boy record, really, isn't it? Let's face it. Yeah, never in actually in a metal band, but that was the one that started me and my friends wanting to play music together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, I guess at that time as well, like, there was, there was a lot of metal around and, like, perhaps there was some stuff that was kind of better written or more, you know, had a bit more virtuosity to it or that kind of thing. But um, Metallica had that, like... Yeah, I like metal that comes from punk i don't like virtuoso kind of metal it's never connected with me like i remember mm. having oh god what who was it it was I, yeah it was you know kind of i had like you know my metal records but it was all kind of the thrash kind of side of things that i yeah, like yeah 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 someone tried to give me like some maiden and i was like ah this is shit you know, <laughs> fair, <laughs> fair. I'm not feeling the maiden when then. I was a kid, you know, like yeah. I wanted to run around and smash stuff up. And, you know, it was much better doing that to like 
Barbie on Driven or something like that, then uh, yeah, you know, some, yeah. something tacky. Bon Scott era ACDC was that for me. It was yeah. just like, Bon was just such a fucking badass. Like, I remember hearing him for the first time when I was a little kid. And I was like, man, I don't know what he's singing about, but it sure does sound cool as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> anytime, anytime any of those songs came on, I was just like, wow. What was yours, Charlie? Because you're a little bit younger than me. I want to know. What, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I was, yeah, I'm, I was trying to, I was thinking about it this whole time. I couldn't think, you know, when Slipknot put out their third album, which isn't seen as, I don't think their best, but it kind of slots in with the first two on that. Which one, one was that? So that's volume, it's just called volume, it's called volume three, the subliminal verses. And it's okay. got like, it's got loads. It's like when they started to go really like, they start to do pop basically. So it's got Before I Forget and Vermillion and Dual it's got duality right. on it. With the hitting okay. the hitting the hitting the um beer keg with a baseball bat. And that. That. <laughs> I wanna do that. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But that album was absolutely amazing. And like I didn't have any siblings who were into heavy music or anything like that. Um, so I kind of got into it through the mainstream and things like that. Um, so yeah, clocking slipknot was the right thing to that do. That first Slipknot sure. album is still an Yeah, album. one and two, so, but the first The self-titled one. one, yeah, it was oh, incredible. Goodness. Have you heard the one that came before the self-titled one that everyone thinks is the first one, but uh, isn't? Would it make the Kill Repeat, that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind, weird. It kind of sounds like Incubus, but smoking, early Incubus, <laughs> but they've been smoking crack. Really? Like, it's so fucked up, crack. man. He's like Mike Patton ran into an Incubus uh, yeah. rehearsal and just fucking started beating them all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, He's a, absolute insanity well, have you album. heard the new guns and roses single that is literally the worst thing i've ever fucking heard but there's i haven't but there's something somebody don't said do it. don't listen to it mate and there was a thing on channel four where channel four were doing like a series of big rock shows and it was paris live 92 yeah i watched it over and over and over again when i was a kid man like i could even i think i can even remember the adverts that happened you know what i mean <laughs> It was weird, man. He came out in them little Freddie Mercury shorts <laughs> and the trucker cap yeah, yeah. and the, the beard that made him look like a ginger grover off of Sesame Street. Yeah. And he'd say it like this. And I was like, what the fuck? What is going on? I do not understand. And people like this? How would be Robert Plant, but he, he just, he's just not getting it. <laughs> I, know, I was pretty obsessed with that when I was a kid. That mm. I had a VHS of that and watched it over and over and over and over again. I mean, for me, the... Uh, VHS to rewatch over and over again was uh, Pantera 3, Watch It Go. Oh, man. Jesus. I, I won a copy of it on VHS out of Kerrang! one time, uh, like 98, something like that. Yeah. And I'd only heard like a couple of Pantera tracks and I was like, these are, these are sick. I want more. That's and so I en entered into the competition, got the video, uh, came home from school one day and my mum was like, something came for you in the mail. I was like, oh, opened it up. Oh, shit. Went and watched it and just fucking looped it twice on the first the first go around and was like, yeah, that, this is that was like Jackass before Jackass, basically. That that's Jackass what that, with riffs. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that video was. Like I had all three of them. And yeah, I just yeah, we used to go to house parties and put it on and then just try and do the shit they were doing. And just yeah. you just destroy people's houses. They'd be like, why is there a chair in the ceiling? Yeah. <laughs> and why is someone painted green? You know, <laughs> you know, like all of that kind of dumb shit. Like, that fucking yeah, the Kirk Weinstein uh, Hulk core shit was incredible. Where he's just wrecking the bathrooms. Yeah, uh, so funny. Man. <laughs> Love it. Just that, that shit is great. <laughs> we but, could yeah, totally I mean, do a vulgar video, guys. It's wasted death. I think yeah, <laughs> that would be so good. <laughs> wasted video. Yeah, Shotgun, exactly. not my house. We trash. Like. <laughs> <laughs> in Tom's house. Nah. Yeah, do it, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> No. Yeah, I really want to watch those VHSs now, man. That sounds what you sick. need to do, go and find like, um, you know, there's like loads of shit areas in like old fucked up towns where all the housing is like really dilapidated and to try and get a bit of like cash injected into the area and, and whatever. They're offering houses for like a quid, but you've got to do them up. Go buy one so and trash it. Go and buy one for a quid, trash it and then sell it for 50p. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've halved its value. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's one one for the press kit as well. Yeah, totally. We halved the value of a house. Yeah. <laughs> halved it overnight. Yeah. That's a wasted death business model. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, so a guest question then from outside of the APF sphere. This one comes from my good buddy, Sam Orr of the band 1968, and also Sam's Guitars in Chester up in the Northwest. He's recently opened up a guitar shop, so you should all go and check that out online and give him a like and a follow on uh, Instagram and all that as well. He wanted to ask a question uh, for the APF podcast, which was, how much was your last royalty check and what did you spend it on? (laughs) <laughs> uh, royalty royalty check. Check. <laughs> i did actually i did actually get one this year but it was oh, amazing it was about 120 quid and so i think i probably i have fuck knows it just disappeared on like an electricity bill or something yeah. like that. <laughs> that's rock and yeah roll. i think i think i got my biggest one that i've ever got to date i think it was um it was 50 quid Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think I just put that on some rent or something. <laughs> Every now and again, I get a, an email from Spotify, and it's like, "Yeah, you've got eighteen p." Yeah. Like, wow, that that must have been like a hundred thousand streams. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's you. That's you keeping it looping it overnight, isn't it? Like, yeah. I've uh, I got tw- twenty three US dollars. Uh, I don't know why it came in dollars and not pounds, but um, that is that is the biggest number <laughs> we've had. <laughs> Mystery you, dollars. You, you didn't argue it. You, you didn't argue, it, but argue yeah. to them. <laughs> yeah, money's money, mate. Dollars exactly. talk anyway. USD so. and a bit, couple of bits of gravel and some twigs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so when can we expect to see you guys live then? I know you said you'd booked some shows, but um, you're going to be doing some shows to support these last two releases. And are you backing them up with any other promotional shenanigans like a, a video or some special merch or anything like that? Uh, well, we've got our first gig next week. Is it Fortnight, that? 9th of 9th no. September? Yeah, it's not September, next week, right? yeah. We sign something like that to a ninth of September. That's um the Victoria Dalston, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. And then we've got and then we've got a Cardiff show, 9th of October, which is gonna be wicked at the is it at the moon? Yeah. That's oh, gonna yeah, be great. Moon Club's great, man. I've played there. Yeah. I've not been there for ages and ages and ages, but I I love that, love that whole area. Like women yeah. history is wicked. Um, and then we got, and then we got the Black Heart the day after that, which is the APF and New Heavy Sounds uh, all day, yeah. where the two labels are teaming up, which doesn't happen that often for labels to kind of join up uh, yeah. for an event like this. So that's going to yeah, be wicked. It's nice to see. Yeah, and we got yeah. limbs on the bill, uh, grave lines, um, just a bunch of. I think it's four bands from each label. Yeah, beggar. Cool. Yeah, beggars on there. I'll be yeah. doing a double. I'm on double duties that night, so if yeah. I don't make it, tell, yeah, my, yeah, tell my family hello. On the night, <laughs> yeah. Bag of stuff. That'll be good. Make sure, you have your shred- make sure you have your shreddies for breakfast before yeah. you get down there. It's gonna have to be. It's gonna have to be shreddies involved. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just those three then so far, or you got more? No, nah, that's it. I think, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's it. We'll be. I think we'll we'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get. It. Out there a bit more, I think, as things go on. But um I think one of people actually want to see if I can actually play guitar before they fucking book me, frankly. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? They know that everyone else is going to be able to play, but I think everyone... I want to know. You know what yeah, I mean? We all want to know. <laughs> you know? Um, and so yeah, no, but then I think once we've got these three out of the way, we'll probably I don't know, we we're gonna knuckle down and get on with an album that's kind of high priority kind of shit. So these shows. Mm-hmm. You know, like we'll have the EPs and the shirts that we've done up for sale. Um, and then, yeah, just really want to cr- like try and because I do feel as though we've kind of built up a little bit of momentum with APF with these two releases. So, yeah, try not to wait too long before we land a, a full length. When I say full length, like 20 minutes, right? That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. no That's, longer. Yeah, yeah, no longer. It's got to be. I, I think I was listening to Nails today. Um, you'll never be one of us or whatever that yeah. record is and it's 20 minutes you're like this is fucking perfect man so short it's great so I want to do that <laughs> if it's longer than Rain and Blood then we've gone wrong yeah <laughs> well, how long was Rain and Blood? what was it? Tw- 28? yeah so really? Well, it didn't even break half an hour yeah, I don't think it t- 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 I'm going to have to check that I'll be wrong then but. I want to be around 25 minutes tops man for an album for this stuff 
it's how you play shit. It's not what you play, you know. Like guitar is this weird instrument where, like, the better you get at it, the worse you make it sound. You know, like drums are the other way around. You get better at drums, they sound better. You know, bass. Yeah. There's a, there's a line. You know, you can get better and better, and then you start to make it sound shit. You know, like <laughs> level forty two. Fuck knows what that guy was doing, but he made that guitar sound fucking horrible and like i absolutely believe that with guitars like the better you get you just like that doesn't sound better that sounds worse okay it's all in time and shit but that does not make it sound better to me <laughs> fair enough fair that's enough. why i'm at the moment i'm actually like at the peak of my guitar playing <laughs> <laughs> it'll never sound better yeah, it won't ever sound better than it does at the moment, you know. Because like, it's just pure and raw right now, yeah? Yeah, it's not pure. Unfiltered. But unfiltered. Yeah. <laughs> Unpasteurized. Yeah, yeah. No, I, tune, <laughs> I tune all the Unvaccinated. And, yeah. and yeah. Anti-vax guitar tones. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> come near me, you'll get COVID just from the guitar player. An anti-vax guitar tone. I love it. All right. So aside from the live shows, then what's next for you guys? Have you got any uh, big ticks that you want to put on the bucket list? Any bands that you looking to play with? Any venues or festivals you've got your eyes on? Sort of looking to the future. I don't know. Really, just keep having fun. The simple yeah. as that. Really, you know. Like the moment I I did say to everyone, I was like, I don't ever want to headline a gig because it's too stressful. <laughs> Always want to play second. You know what I mean? Just before the yeah. headliner, that's that's the fucking sweet spot right there. So that that's kind of it. Always play second on a bill in the middle. We'll right look here. for some uh, we'll look for some support slots there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, just some, some sort well, like of the crowd. The crowd are warmed up. They've had a few beers. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. but you know, people people who've got work early haven't had to leave yet. And totally, you know, like because sort of it's always stressful when fucking lineups are running late, and they're like, "Oh, you're gonna have to cut your set down or just get fucking bollocks by the sound man." You know, mm. I was just like, I can't be bothered. You know, I want to be the motherfucker that overruns and pisses everyone. You, <laughs> you want to be the guy who doesn't bring an amp, like doesn't bring a cab. Yeah, like rolls up, <laughs> drinks the rider. Yeah. Hey, can I borrow your headliners. guitar strap, please? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leave with someone's guitar strap. Yeah, yeah. I'm the drummer's yeah. clutch, even though I'm not a drummer. Yeah. Pocket <laughs> full of clutches. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, totally. You know, like, that's what this band is about. It's not about doing well. It's like it's about nicking stuff. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> nicking stuff. <laughs> Klepto core. Yeah. yeah. So Klepto core with a COVID guitar tone. Yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you can have that, lads. Put that on we'll your basket. We'll have that. Yeah, oh, we'll have that. Good <laughs> right. It's now time for the world famous APF Records competition. Uh, this week, you can win a uh, a sexy little bundle from the lads at Wasted Death, uh, a t shirt, and a copy of Ugly as Hell to Uglier Than Hell on uh, either tape or CD, whatever uh, whatever format you want. What was the first record? The Tom Bruin stole off his brother. Was it A, The Who, My Generation, B, Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath, or C, Saxon, Wheels of Steel? Uh, so you know the drill by now. Go and find uh, the post with this question on it on the uh, APF Records Facebook page, at APF Pod, and uh, drop your answer in the comments we will choose a winner at random and slide into your dms to let you know that you are going to be the lucky recipient of this little bundle that the lads have put up for the competition so that about wraps it up for the day lads it's been great to have you on but before we go is there anything else that you want to plug any side hustles that you or your mates are involved in or just any shout outs you want to make before uh, before we finish up if anyone uh, does decent guitar lessons, give me a shout. Someone's, <laughs> someone's got to teach Wayne guitar. Yeah. That's our yeah. one shout out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyone can help. <laughs> <laughs> now come along to, I'd say, come if you're in uh, London or Cardiff, come along to come along to the shows that we've got coming up at the uh, Victoria on the Victoria on the ninth set. Yeah. Cardiff on the 9th of October. Um, Black Heart on the tenth. Nice. Yeah. There's a good old plug. Come, come and say hello. Come and have some drinks. Have a good old time, because we all need it. Yeah. We all need it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we all need it a lot. Yeah, shake some dust off. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Definitely. 
All right, fellas. Well, it's been grand to have you on. Mate, thank you very much. Lovely to chat.